take that, but I wrote myself a note. All right. So again, this is a warm up. We're getting ready. Did I already put the? So we're doing worksheet two A B. We're going to be graphing and analyzing power functions and radical functions, and then we're going to be solving radical equations. Does anybody know what that means? Extraneous solutions. Sometimes when you do a problem, some of the answers you get don't work. It's like you got an extra solution because of the way you did the problem, and it won't work when you plug it back in. Okay? We'll see that. All right. We were doing this warm up. I just, this is not an equation. Everybody, all right? So we're just supposed to square this. By the way, they came up in the other classes with a great, instead of, we can't distribute across this, right? We're all good on that. There's no distributing exponents. But remember yesterday when we were doing stuff like this, and we said you really aren't distributing the exponent. We just decided to call it apply. We're going to apply that exponent to everything in there first. Yeah, well, <laughs> the retribution thing just didn't catch on, I guess. But we, we're we just going to apply it. Okay, but this is not a case where we can just apply it or distribute it because there's a binomial. So we really need to, whoops, I left off the two. We need to think about it as a FOIL question or we're going to get really confused. All right, this is part of today's lesson in a few minutes. What is 2 square roots of x times 2 square roots of x? It's 4 square roots of x squared, which is going to simplify to be 4x. Everybody okay? We should probably have an absolute value, but we're just not going to worry about it. Okay. Um, then we have this and this, which are both negative 3 times 2 square roots of x and negative 3 times 2 square roots of x. So it would be minus 6 square roots of x and another minus 6 square roots of x. Everybody okay? And then at the end, when we do this times this, we get plus 9. So we end up with 4x minus 12 square roots of x, because we can combine those. Everybody all right with that part? And then we had a plus 9 back here. Okay, we'll go from there later. But I just wanted to do one of those. Now, when it's part of an equation, then we'll figure out what we have to do. But I just wanted to warm up with that. All right, the first part of the lesson I think is easy. I'm a little nervous about it on the quiz just because we don't spend a lot of time on this. We're just looking at basic power functions and rational functions, and we're going to analyze the graph, meaning we're going to look for increasing, decreasing, zeros, whatever, okay, all that fun stuff. So a power function is when you have something <laughs> times x to some power, where a and n are non-zero constant real numbers. So you could have square root of 6 times x to the negative one-third. That's still considered a power function, okay? The n can be anything as long as it's not zero. All right, a power function is also a type of monomial function. What does that mean? One term, there's no plus or minus on the back, okay, like plus 2x squared minus 7x or anything, just a single term. All right. So. This should not be when you have an even degree. Are we good on the word degree, guys? The highest exponent power. Basically, in this, it's the exponent power. If the exponent power is even and the leading coefficient is positive, both ends will be up. Does that sound familiar? If it's of even degree, in other words, it's a squared or a fourth power, and a is negative, both ends will go down. Just think about a parabola, yes? Um, these both have x and y intercepts at zero. Domain is all real number. Range is depending. This one's zero to infinity. This one's negative infinity to zero. These are continuous, both of them. 
they both have symmetry with the y-axis. So as long as it's a single monomial power function with even exponent, it is an even function because it has y-axis symmetry. All right, they have a max or min at zero, zero, depending whether it's opening up or down. And they each have a branch that is decreasing and another branch that is increasing, yes? Increasing, decreasing, remember that? All right, and then the end behavior. So those are the kinds of things it's gonna ask you about. This is an odd degree. Now, it could be that it's doing something crazy like this in the middle. But as long as the leading coefficient is positive, the left end will be down and the right end is up. Just think of a cubic. If it's got a negative coefficient, it flips over. Yes, reflects over the x, and so it changes things a bit. The domain and range are both all real numbers for odd degree. They're still going through 0, 0. They're still continuous. They have origin symmetry. As long as it's a monomial term, it's not going to do that shape if it's a monomial term, okay? So I shouldn't have drawn that. Um, they have no max or mins. This is entirely increasing, and this one is entirely decreasing. Does that seem okay? No max or mins to change things around. All right, so here are some examples. This is a one-third x cubed, and they have plotted it. The domain and range is all real numbers. Its intercept is at 0, 0, both x and y. Its end behavior, um, the left end is down. And this says the right is up, whatever order you want to put that in. Um, and it is continuous. All right. So, um, degree of a monomial, we're good with degree. What does degree mean? Yeah, it says the sum of the exponents of the variables of a monomial, but we, we're only going to have one exponent in our monomial. So, yes, the power, the degree. So, this is degree four with a positive leading coefficient, yes? So we could graph this. We could graph it on our calculator, but can you give me three ordered pairs off the top of your head? Zero, zero, one, three, negative one, three, yes, negative one to the fourth power is positive one. Okay, is that enough to get the shape? As long as it's a monomial term, they're all going to kind of look, if they're even degree, they're all going to look like parabolas. They're just going to be a little flatter here, but yeah, whatever. All right, so tell me, domain and range, anybody? For domain, yes. Range? What kind of bracket? Can equal zero and up. Okay, that's important. Um, intercepts? Yeah, you can just write zero. I would just write zero, zero. You could write x intercept zero, y intercept zero. I don't care. It's all the same, right? It just goes through zero, zero. Um, end behavior. I'm going to do f of x first. Is that going to bother anybody? <laughs> you can do it however you want. I did put it on the quiz with blanks just to make it easier to grade, okay? But if you want to think of it as the left side first, it's going to do what? Up or positive infinity. And in this case, it's also going up on the right side. Everybody okay? Again, I put it on the quiz with blanks like that, just like that. Uh, if you want to think of the X coming before the Y, it doesn't matter, but I just, it's much easier to grade if I don't have to try to figure out what everybody wrote. Uh, increasing, decreasing. Does this have both? Oh, what did I, it, continuity, thanks. It is continuous, right? There's no gaps or holes or asymptotes. They're not all going to be that way today. 
and I can't spell that no matter what. Did I get it right? Okay. Um, what about increasing, decreasing? We go left to right. This side is going... Yes. When you give the interval for increasing or decreasing, what kind of values are you using, x's or y's? Yes, it is the domain interval, in other words, the x interval. So this side of the graph you're telling me is decreasing, yes? So it is decreasing from negative infinity until zero and increasing, decreasing, it's just always parentheses. And then it is increasing or the y values go up as you go to the right of that. Yes, no, still confused. Okay, it's left to right. Are the y values going up or are they going down? Okay. Recall that 1 over x or x to the negative 1 is undefined at 0. So we're going to get some asymptotes when we start doing this. Okay. Similarly, x to the negative 2 and x to the negative 3 are undefined at 0 because 1 over x squared, 1 over x cubed, you still can't have 0 in the denominator. All right, these will contain discontinuities. They are also called reciprocal functions. So this one, 1 fifth x to the negative 3, you can graph this, but does anybody know how we could write that differently? It's 1 fifth times what? 1 over x cubed, which could also be written as 1 over 5x cubed. I, I don't care. If you want to just type it in your calculator, it's fine. I'm just thinking we could do it in our head if we wrote it a little differently. Can it be 0? No. So if it can't be 0, can you get a 0 out of it? Is there way, any way 1 over that was going to equal 0? So it's going to have asymptotes here and here. That means it does not touch either one of those, okay? So it's not continuous. I'm abbreviating. All right. The domain, well, let's graph it. I don't want you to worry about domain and range ahead of time. Um, if I put in a 1, what do I get out, guys? Do it on your calculator. It's fine. I, we really need to talk about the calculator because what happens is the calculator is misleading. That tricky little piece of technology. All right. I'm going to put one fifth in parentheses. Someone might want to hit the lights. And then I'm going to just type x to the negative 3 because that's the way it was originally, right? Now, my calculator is not, yours probably has the negative 3 up in the exponent, but it's all the same thing. Everybody good? All right. I'm going to start with a standard window. So I'm going to do a zoom 6. Kind of hard to see what's going on, right? Um, I could try a zoom in or a zoom decimal or lots of different things you could try. If you do zoom in, you want to hit enter. I don't know if that's a good window for you. What's happening? Can you tell? This window is a little confusing. It always looks like it touches the x-axis, and we already said it can't, right? If you trace, if you trace off to the right, it doesn't ever become zero, unless it's a rounding thing. If you trace off to the left, it doesn't ever become zero or positive. The y value doesn't. But what's happening here in the middle? That's my concern. Yeah, if I go to like trace point one, it's up at 200. It is getting closer and closer to that y axis. Everybody okay? It's not stopping at one or anything. All right. So I don't really care how accurate your graph is. It doesn't go through one, one. It's very. Okay. 
okay it's not straight at any point my pictures are horrible you get the idea though okay and i don't care i the ones i put on the quiz you actually could find a couple nice ordered pairs if you want but i'm not grading on accuracy of the graph as long as you can tell me that you know it's not actually hitting either of those asymptotes okay so what is the domain left to right n0 to infinity or if i was really nice you could just say x can't be zero yes everything except zero and i'm really okay with that this time around if it doesn't say specifically interval notation you can state it as a um, a restriction in other words tell me x can't be zero what about the range yes so you you could again just say y can't be zero or you could do the whole interval notation gobbledygook if you want. All right, what else do we need? We did domain range. Does it have any intercepts? Does it ever actually touch no. either the X or the Y? None. Okay. Uh, end behavior? Mm, I'm a little worried about this. Can you get end behavior right? What's it doing? As X goes off to the left, the Y value is approaching zero guys are, are you good here are you with us so as this goes off to the left it's getting closer and closer to zero it's actually approaching zero from below and when you get to calc you might need to know that but for us it's just getting it closer and closer to zero yes it on the right hand side it is approaching the y value is also approaching zero. It's approaching it from above, but it doesn't matter. It's approaching zero. Okay, that's end behavior. We already did continuity increasing and decreasing. Any ideas? It's really hard to tell because it looks so straight, but what is all this doing? It's decreasing, okay? Because as you come from out here, it's getting further, and then it goes, it's getting further from the x-axis, which is making it a lower y value, and then it goes down sharply. So all of that side is doing what? Yeah, but we want to say from the left. So decreasing would be negative infinity to zero. Everybody okay? And the right side is doing what? What is it doing over here? Decreasing as well. Any questions about that? Okay. As the y value is getting closer and closer to zero as we go off to the right. Better? Yep, no worries. Anybody else? All right. Guys, okay, so remember, I, I think one version of the quiz has a question very much like this, okay? The other version of the quiz, I think, has an x to the negative four. Does anybody know what that will do? Um, no, because of the denominator part, it still has asymptotes. Okay, if it was an x to the fourth, yes. What it does is it makes both branches go up, like the volcano graph. Did we ever do one of those? Okay, both branches will be above. So we should probably do one of those the day. If it, you should have one on your homework, but we can do it when we review. All right, recall that one over x to the one over n refers to the nth root. Okay, so we did all this yesterday, right? This is the nth root of x to the p, or the nth root of x all to the p. We did this yesterday, we good? So these are called radical functions. Okay, it has at least one radical expression containing the independent variable. So this one, for example, two, like this is a radical function which could also be written as two to the what power guys three-fourths everybody okay that's called a radical function 
All right, and I'm going to skip all this because we just talked about that. All right, a radical function when it's of even degree will have only positive answers. When it's of odd power, the end, okay, the root, let me get this right. When the root or the denominator of the fraction is even, you will only get positive answers. When it's odd, you can get positive and negative. This makes sense, guys. Square root, cubed root, yes? Okay. Um, domain, positive. It goes through 0, 0. It is continuous from 0 to infinity. It has no symmetry. It is always increasing. We okay with that part? All right. It has an absolute minimum, but no maximum. And it has only right end behavior. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go with that. All right. Here it's domain and range. Both are all real numbers. It crosses at 0, 0. It is continuous. It has origin symmetry. It is always increasing. Is that going to be a problem for any of you? Coming from the left, the y value gets bigger, and then the y value keeps getting bigger. Are we okay? Always increasing. All right. End behavior, the left end is going down, and the right end is going up. Even though it looks like it's flattening out, it's not. Actually, it's it flat, but it doesn't stop going up. All right, so let's try this one. Ugh. I'm going to graph it on my calculator. Any questions about how to get that on your calculator? Is it, it's a cubed root, isn't it, guys? So you could type it to what power if you wanted? Negative 2x plus 5 to the 2 thirds if you wanted. Okay, otherwise I'm going to go negative. Then I'm going to go to math and down to number four to find cube root of 2x plus 5 quantity squared. Is everybody getting the graph to look like this? Definitely weird. <laughs> Can you tell where that special, it's at negative two and a half. Does that number seem important to anybody? It's what's underneath here, right? If you set the underneath here to zero, that's where that's coming from. And then it's going this way and this way. All right, so talk to me. Domain? Because it's a cube root, you can take a cube root of anything, yes? Range? Bottom to top. What kind of a bracket? Does it actually hit the y-axis? Yeah, you can put in negative two-fifths and it'll come out exactly zero. Five halves, just kidding, not two-fifths, five halves. And it will hit okay intercepts it has both yes the x intercept is negative 2.50 did anybody double check that what do we call it on our calculator Uh, it's called a zero, and it's somewhere between negative three and negative two. It doesn't have a sign change, so it can be very hard to find. I might say no sign change. Nope, oh, I got it to say negative 2.50. Okay. Does it have a y-intercept? How do you find the y-intercept? Uh, yeah, just trace zero, enter. Or you can choose a value at zero. I got negative 2.94. Anybody get that? Okay, end behavior. The function is doing what on the left? 
Yes, it's going down. The function is doing what on the right? It's also going down, yes? Everybody okay? Both ends are going down and down and down. Not as fast as other things, but they're still going down. All right, what am I missing? Increasing and decreasing. Anybody think they got that? Is it doing both? It is doing what over here? Increasing, yes, is that what we said? From negative infinity until negative 2.5, and then it's decreasing from negative 2.5 to the right. I don't think I put one like that on the quiz, but kind of not hard, is it, really? As long as you got a graphing calculator? <laughs> Do we have one more of those to do or not? Radical functions, okay. Remember when is n is even, the domain and range will have restrictions. All right, a radical equation, all right, is an equation in which a variable is in a radical. Genius, what a great name, radical equation, okay. Raising each side of an equation to a power sometimes produces extraneous solutions or solutions that do not satisfy the original equation. It's important to check for extraneous solutions. Okay, when it says check for extraneous, it just means just check your answers, make sure they work. That's it. Extraneous just means it doesn't work. All right, I want you to just watch because this is a nightmare. I'm going to square this side. But in order to square this side, it's way more complicated version of the one we did earlier today, right? I have to foil all that. What? Um, I am, but it's not as complicated as this one. All right, what happens over here? It's just x minus 2. Over here, help me foil this out. 5 times 5 is? 25. This times this would be minus 5 square roots of 15 minus x. Everybody okay? Here is 5 times a negative same thing. And then last but not least, we have this negative garbage times this negative garbage back here. Negative times a negative will become positive, yes, square root of garbage times square root of garbage is garbage square rooted of squared, I don't know, it's just garbage, 15 minus x. <laughs> okay or not okay? Square root of 15 minus x times square root of 15 minus x is 15 minus x squared and also under a square root, which makes it just 15 minus x. Okay, clean up some of this for me. What do we have? Over here I have x minus 2. What do I have over here? 25 plus 15 is 40. Those are combined to be minus 10 square roots of 15 minus x. And I had back here a minus x. Okay, ideas? I am going to move the 40 over to the other side, and I'm going to add the x over to the other side. So I have now 2x minus 42. Is that okay? Guess what we get to do again? We have to square both sides. We we could divide by we could divide by the ten, but then we'd have like decimals or fractions or something over here. You want me to do that? It isn't going to matter. But do you understand why I have to square, Ariana? Okay. So help me foil this out. Do you understand why I'm not having you write this down? Okay. 
Not to say we aren't going to do one of these, but boil this and what do we get? Minus another 84x, right? Plus 42 times 42. Somebody help me. Like that? Okay. What happens when I square this? We can apply <laughs> the squared <laughs> recipro something restribution. Okay. Negative 10 squared becomes what? Okay. Square root of 15 minus x squared becomes. Okay. But what else is going on there? Yeah, it's still this, right? Okay. Okay, 4x squared minus 168, is that right? And over here we have 1500 minus 100x. Okay. So add 100x over here. So we have 4x squared minus 68x, subtract 1,500. Okay, I think they're all divisible by 4. And because it's an equation, we can throw that out. So we get x squared minus, is it 17x, guys? No? 34, yeah, I think so. Plus... Um, okay, we're almost done. It factors, factors of 66. Does that make 17 in the middle? Okay. Okay. All right, guys. We do have to check, and I'm afraid that you aren't going to remember to check your answers. We have to go back to the original, guys, seriously, original equation was, okay, what were our solutions, 6 and 11? Okay, so let's try 6. So it would be 6 minus 2 equals 5 minus the square root of 15 minus 6. This is the square root of 4 equals 5 minus the square root of 9, which is 2 equals 5 minus 3. Does that work? Okay. What's the other one? 11. Square root of 11 minus 2 equals 5 minus square root of 15 minus 11. This will be square root of 9 equals 5 minus square root of 4. 3 equals 5 minus 2. They both work on this problem. No. The one on the quiz you have to square twice, but it's nowhere near that messy, I promise. All right. All right. What we're going to do is this is an easy one. Do you see this question, guys, on your worksheet? Okay, why is this so much easier? We did one like this at, at, in a warm-up, and you guys got it in no time. Isolate the radical, yes. Add 1 over to 3, and they got 4. And then what did they do? Cube. I think it's a cube root. So they cubed both sides and got 64 equals this mess. Then they set it equal to 0, factored, and got two solutions. And they plugged them back then, and they both checked, which with a cubic would make sense because it could be negative. All right. So let's do this one for practice. What are we going to do first? So if we add 6, we get what? x squared minus 1 equals 2. Now what? Cube both sides, and we get? Okay. Plus 1 again gives me x squared equals 9. Yes. Okay. 
Do you think they're both going to work? I think they're both going to work because the first thing you do is square it, right? Yes. Okay. So because the first thing you do is square, it doesn't matter if we put a 3 or a negative 3 in here because what happens? They both become 9 minus 1 is 8. And the cubed root of 8 is 2 minus 6 is negative 4. So it's checking, yes? Both of them will check? All right. Can I move on? Um, you have to know how to do these algebraically or you're not going to get full credit on the quiz. I know some of you learned to do these last year and just learned to graph them. Okay. And it's going to work in calc, so I need you to learn to do them algebraically. All right. What's happening here? This is an easy one. Square both sides, and there's nothing that isn't in a radical. You can check your answer by graphing, absolutely. And it will also help you determine if it's extraneous, because if the graph doesn't intersect where one of your answers, then you'll know you can throw it out. Square both sides, and I get 6n minus 3 equals negative 15 plus 7n. Can we solve that? If I subtract 6n this way and add 15 this way, is that okay with everybody? I got n is 12. You find it? Okay. If I put a 12 back in, on this side I get a lovely square root of 69, 72 minus 3 equals over here I had negative 15 plus 84 which is square root of 69 so whatever disgusting decimal that is they're equal yes okay so the answer is 12. all right we're getting to the messy ones you need to guys you need to isolate the radical if possible there's only one. So we're going to move 4x minus 21 equals square root of 56 minus x. Everybody okay? Would you have done that first? Okay. Then what? Okay. But when you square the left, you're really foiling it out, right? I'm going to write it out that way so we don't do anything silly. So we get 16x squared minus 84x and another 84x plus 441 for is it 441 okay equals what's happening on the right just 56 minus x now because it's a, a squared what do we want to do no crying in pre-calc we need to get it equal to zero, right? So we can either factor or use quadratic or some disgusting thing like that. So if I subtract 56 over here and add x, I have a 16x squared minus 177, anybody? Negative 84 minus 84 plus 1, 167. Negative, yes. Thanks. And 441 minus 56, um, 385. Okay. <laughs> the book. Okay. You want to do quadratic just because it's... One sixty seven plus or minus one sixty seven squared minus four times sixteen times three eighty five all over sixteen times two. One sixty seven squared minus four times sixteen times three eighty five is thirty two forty nine and the square root of thirty two forty nine 
is 57. I figured it would come out nice, but. So it's 167 plus or minus 57 over 32. Okay, girls, you got the plus, boys, you got the minus. Plus is seven, minus. Not nice. Okay, if you do a fraction, it's 55 over 16. Which makes sense. It would have had to have a 16 in there somewhere. Okay. Yeah. Um. This is one I'm thinking I would graph to determine if there's two solutions, if they both work. Okay, we didn't get to the hard kind, guys. I know that seemed like the hard kind. Look, guys, please watch. This one, you're gonna wanna move the radical over to the other side. And then square both sides. Now this side will just become what? Over here. You're going to get 1 plus 2 square roots of 4x plus 9 plus 4x plus 9. Then you're going to isolate and have to square again. If you divide both sides by 2, and you square both sides again, and then it factors. And you get 4 or negative 2. And you got to check them. Uh, I don't think negative 2 is going to work. Because negative 2 would give me square root of 0 minus square root of 1 equals 1, and that's not true. Okay. 